Hello there, it's been about six months since I've done any house renovation videos and I thought I might make one just focusing on the bathroom because I think that's probably more interesting and that's where most of the activity has taken place. So in case you're new to the channel or new to this project, basically a very old fashioned bar bathroom with a bright blue suite, two doors, two separate rooms in dire need of refurbishment. And um, well, let me just show you the progress. So the latest thing is, there's only one door now. Look at that. Took the old door away, built a wooden frame in there, put cement board one side and um, tile backing board the other side. Then got a plasterer in to skim this side of it, which was a bit of a hassle. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Then put lining paper on this and filled some little tiny gaps and sanded them I'm ready for painting the hall but it's a while away before i'm going to paint the hall let's be honest because somebody made a good comment actually on a previous video with all the upheaval in the bathroom and taking all the old suite out and stuff things are going to get damaged and scratched and dirty so best do the hall last so i'm very happy with the plastering work generally here so I suppose it's possibly my fault for misleading the plasterer. I used cement backing board, as it was called, that said it was suitable for plastering. The plasterer put the skim on and it went like crazy paving across the whole thing. And he spent like a good hour trying to stop it from crazy paving. And in, in the most part he has, but there is a tiny bit down here. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it in this light. So my advice is if something says that it's suitable for plastering, you probably do still need to tell your plasterer to put blue grit, I think it's called on there, which helps the plaster adhere to it better. He probably should have done that anyway, rather than taking my advice. But anyway, he did a good, he did a good, generally a good job. All that's left there is a, I need the skirting board at the bottom, which I've cut ready to put on. So this new doorway is not the standard thickness of what you might consider an internal wall to be. So this wall was a bit of a hassle to kind of replicate the same thickness as the other walls but i did it by turning cls timbers kind of 90 degrees so they're not the usual thickness and stability that you would want but but actually it's as strong it's actually stronger than the other walls because it's actually got a wooden frame in it now and with the tiles on the other side it's given the wall even more stability let's go in the bathroom because there's been quite a significant change right the first thing is um, let me just turn the light on. I don't like that noise, by the way. I think that sounds cheap, but there's not a lot I can do about that because it's, what the hell is that? I thought it was a chicken, but it's not. Last time you saw my bathroom, I had no ceiling. I have a ceiling now. I had new plasterboard and skim and four spotlights installed and an extractor fan in the middle of the room as well. Very happy with how this has gone. I have made a spreadsheet of all the costs to date. I've spent about four and a half grand uh, and I will do a kind of breakdown in future, I'll have a breakdown, but I'll also do a breakdown in a future video to show you where those costs have been incurred. By far the most expensive thing in the bathroom so far has been firstly the electrics, uh, but actually more than that, it was the removal of the Artex ceiling and the removal of the um, Marley floor tiles and bitumen adhesive. I'm going to have a, a shower tray here. This is a bit of an odd size this but I found a, a 1650 millimeter length shower tray that will go in there with only a little kind of basically one centimeter either side which I think we can pad out comfortably or uh, put some kind of found these things that like basically is like this like a trim that you put at the edge of it so that you put it behind the tile so that any water that goes down on the tile runs into the shower tray. I found a sink or vanity unit, whatever it's called, from Victoria Plumbing. I'm just putting off showing you what's been done in the bathroom because there has been some significant progress over there. Um, I've started stripping the uh, paint off a lot of these walls so I can do that with just a scraper actually and kind of brute force because if you tile directly onto this stuff there's a chance that it's going to just come off but this is proving to be quite tough actually um, and this wall here is proving to be very tough and i'm actually thinking i might leave it it's really adhered and i feel like actually i'm not removing paint i'm sort of removing 
plaster it's um, if that makes any sense on the other walls the paint just kind of flakes off on there if I'm having to scrape it so much off the wall then it probably would have just been fine to tile onto um, you can see here I've actually sawn off the um, ledge here because I'm gonna tile right up to the ledges been looking at uh, tile trims and things and grout colours. I was going to build a wooden frame around this actually and put tile backing board on and tile it. I actually found a prefabricated U-shaped tile box that's made of a thick tile backing board and it's got the added advantage that I don't have to construct it so there's less less chance of me cocking up measurements or getting dodgy angles so it should just be a perfect u-shaped box there which i can then screw into the wall um, and then tile let's cut to the chase i have tiled some of the bathroom now so let me show you you ready dun 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 i've started tiling with my tiles from wix uh, these are 30 by 60 city stone beige tiles um, I'm fairly happy with how it's gone. I won't show you too close up. There are a few bits that I'm a little bit um, dubious about, but um, basically because the walls are bowed and what you should really do is get a plasterer in to level it all so that you're tiling onto a perfectly level surface. But obviously because I was trying to sort of save money and do it myself um, and because I'm inexperienced with this, I didn't do that and I kind of as I've been tiling I've realized that I'm tiling like in onto a curved surface which is just a little bit of a pain in the ass but as bathroom tiling goes for my very first example of tiling a bathroom I'm fairly happy with with it following the proper methods of having like putting like a bar at the bottom that's level so that'll be level all the way around the room planned out all the layout in a sort of PowerPoint program so that I avoid kind of having small tiles at the edge of walls and small tiles um, above and below and to the side of the, the windows. So I'm just trying to kind of, you can see the kind of look I'm going for basically. It's a sort of, a little bit like a sort of spa type thing. I, I don't know if it'll work out like that or not. We're having black, so there's gonna be a black radiator on that wall there, which I've ordered and I'm picking that up this Saturday. Um, I have actually bought a toilet, which I'll just show you in a moment. We're gonna have sort of sand colored tile trim actually, and beige colored grout. The dark grout lines do look all right actually, but I think that, because um, I haven't actually grouted yet, but I think that the beige ones will kind of make it look more like a sort of complete wall really, and um, kind of hide some of the slightly uneven grout lines. Uh, I've got three tiles left to do at the top there, actually. I think it's looking pretty good. I hope you agree. I'm going to start tiling around the window shortly. So basically, we're almost at the stage where the bathroom might even be, you could consider it sort of half complete, which is uh, pretty good. I'm hoping to sort of accelerate it over the next few months and just kind of get it done because it's not that I'm sick of it, it's just that it's quite difficult to get the time to do it. Okay, so the toilet system is in there. This is the toilet um, and the slow closed toilet seat. What I will say, and I've got to be quite delicate about how I describe this, but I or we have selected a toilet that doesn't have a shelf in it. So there are a number of toilets these days that seem to have a sort of what you can only describe as a sort of poo shelf sort of examine your waste products or something. I, I'm not really into that. I just want to basically poo into a toilet. So that's that's what we're going for here. Next update will probably be a good few months away, by which time hopefully this half of the room will be done and I'll have started tiling this and I might have even got around to purchasing the the last things. I estimate I've probably got about a grand and a half's worth of stuff left to buy. I'm also going to replace these windows, so they're a kind of weird frosted pattern. I'm just going to get frosted glass to put in there. If you've got any questions or suggestions, please leave them down below because I'd be interested to hear from you. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my loyal patrons who are scrolling down the screen now, especially George Foote, Jennifer Jones, Jim McKay, Samir Al-Amar and Rob Van Eden, who are extremely generous patrons. 
do subscribe if you want more updates and I shall see you next time for another video.